and welcome to Math Talk. I'm your host, Brian Heisler. And during my Math Talk live session not too long ago, I had some requests for videos on word problems. And so today I'm starting a three-part mini-series on different types of word problems. And we're going to start this one with round one. So let's get started. We have a question that asks, the sum of three consecutive numbers is 78. What is the smallest of these three numbers? So I really like these types of problems. I find them pretty intriguing. Um, and there's a couple ways you can actually go about solving them. The first way is you can actually go ahead and just set up an equation and solve there. And the second way is you can kind of think about it a little, you know, outside of the box a little bit. And that's the other way we're going to show you how to solve that after the equation method. So if we were to set up an equation, what we want to do is we want to start with some number, let's call it x. And we have three consecutive numbers, which means the second number is just one more than x. And then the third number is two more than x. So we have this equation where we have x plus x plus 1 plus x plus 2 equals 78. And this is great because we have an equation with different terms, but all the terms have the same variable, which means we can simplify the equation to help solve. So if I simplify it, I get 3x plus 3 equals 78. Then the next step I would have to do is just subtract 3 from both sides. And when I do that, I get 3x equals 75. And then I just need to divide both sides by 3. And when I do that, I get x equals 25. So now I know what x is, and this actually happens to be the smallest of the three numbers because the other two numbers are x plus 1 and x plus 2. So I actually have my answer. But just for completion's sake, um, the other two numbers would just be the next two consecutive numbers after 25, which would be 26 and 27. So there's our answer. So I want to take a look at this same example, but kind of from outside of the box. And this is what really drew me to these types of problems when I figured out this is a trick that can be used to solve this. So we have these three numbers, three consecutive numbers that add up to 78. Whenever you have three consecutive numbers that add up to something, the average of those three numbers is always going to be the middle number of the three. And so let's first figure that out. Well, the average is just the sum divided by how many numbers there are. So 78 divided by 3, which is 26. That means the middle number has to be 26. And so because they're consecutive numbers and 26 is the middle, that means that the other two numbers have to be one less than 26 and one more than 26, which is just 25, 26 is the middle, and then 27. And so the smallest of those is 25. So it's a nice little trick to actually solving these types of problems. It doesn't require you to do any kind of algebra, really. So let's take a look at another similar example. This one says the sum of three consecutive odd numbers is 51, and then asks what is the largest of these three numbers. So we're going to go ahead and approach this example the same way we just looked at the last one without setting up any equations. Again, I have three consecutive numbers. In this case, they're three consecutive odd numbers, which is key. But still, because they're consecutive, the average of those three is always going to be the middle of those three numbers. So let's take the average, 51 divided by 3, I get 17. That means my middle number of the three is 17. So what I want to look at now is what the, the number below it and the number above it are. The key with this is, though, because they are odd numbers, that means the other two numbers are two below and two above. Because if you look at odd numbers, they always differ by two. Like one, three, five, seven, nine, eleven. You're always going up by two. All right? So that means my other two numbers have to be 15 and 19. And of course, that means the largest of those three is 19. All right? Now, if you wanted to set up an equation, you can do it very similar to the last example, where you have some number, let's call it x, and then you have the next two consecutive odd numbers. In that case, again, because they're going up by 2 every time, the next two would be x plus 2 and then x plus 4. 
and then you add those three terms together, you get 51, which is the sum, and you can go about solving it just like you did the last one. Simplify the x's, you know, and then you get some equation, and you solve, and then what's gonna happen is you're gonna end up solving for x, which in that case is the smallest of the three. Since they ask for the largest, you just need to figure out what the other two numbers are and then figure out which of those is the largest one. All right, let's take a one more example. So this is a problem that I threw in here because I like it. And if you've seen on the internet lately, um, you may have seen similar types of these problems that have gone viral as videos. Um, and I just, I wanted to kind of address that and, and throw it in here as an example. So. This one says, when Joseph was eight years old, his brother Jordan was half his age. Now that Joseph is 50 years old, how, is, how old is Jordan? So a lot of people will immediately go to the answer of 25. And that's why this, this, these types of problems have gone viral because that is definitely not the actual answer. Um, and let's take a look at why that's not the answer. So they tell us that when Joseph was eight years old, his brother Jordan was half his age. What that means is when Joseph was eight, Jordan was four. And that means that Jordan is four years younger than Joseph. He's not always going to be half as old as Joseph. That's not really how aging works. Um, so it's really important to know that Jordan is four years younger than Joseph and Jordan is always going to be four years younger than Joseph. So whenever they tell us what Joseph's age is, Jordan is just Joseph's age minus four. So now that Joseph is 50, Jordan is just 50 minus four, which is 46. So the answer is definitely not 25. It is 46. So I hope this helps when you get to solving word problems. Um, be on the lookout for my next two parts in this series. Where I look at how to solve word problems by setting up equations. Um, but I want to let you know that not every word problem necessarily requires you to set up an equation. It could just be a matter of reading the question, thinking outside of the box, and solving it from there. There may actually not have to be much math used at all to solve it. Um, but I hope this helps. And again, be on the lookout for the next two videos. And as always, thanks for watching.